Hi, and welcome to this episode of Dog Color Genetics. In this episode, we're going to talk about three loci today. The E locus, the I locus, and the C locus. If you did not understand what I meant, I recommend that you watch the last three episodes to get caught up, because if you don't, I'm going to confuse you so much. On that note, let us begin with the E locus. E stands for extension, and the E locus is responsible for almost all non-agouti related eumelanin and feomelanin patterns. The E locus determines which area of the coat can produce eumelanin and which can produce feomelanin. The dominance in the E locus isn't known for sure yet, and there may be also alleles that have not been discovered yet, but currently the theory of dominance is big E M, which is mask, Big E G and Big E H, which is grizzle and domino. Big E, which is normal extension, meaning no effect on the dog and the pattern is determined by the A and K locus. And little E, which is recessive red. Eumelanin masks are, in theory, the top dominant in the E series, meaning the dog only needs one Big E M allele to have a mask. Masks can appear on any dog that is genetically sable, tan-pointed, saddled, or a goody. In order to display a mask, the dog cannot be dominant black, but a mask can be visible if the dog is brindled or non-black. All the agouti alleles will show masks except for recessive black. A dog's mask can be affected by liver blue or Isabella because of the eumelanin hairs it produces and can show merle too. Masks can vary greatly, covering anything from just the end of the muzzle to the whole of the muzzle, eyebrows, and ears. And on sable dogs, black masks can also cause black hairs on the chest, back, and tail. Sables with black tipping often have black masks. On some breeds, masked dogs have large amounts of shading on the chest and legs. The genes behind this are unknown right now. It could be a modifier or a variation of the allele. There may be a possible connection between extreme masking and etching, which is when a sable peabald, a sable with white markings, appeared to have eumelanin edges on its patches, or when an Irish spotted dog, typically a border collie-like white marking, have eumelanin borders between the paws, legs, and main body. This is seen in Akitas, St. Bernard's, and Anatolian Shepherd dogs. Extreme masking can also hide tan points where a dog can look solid black but have faint tan markings showing on their legs and underside. Recessive red produces a very visible effect. Recessive red is recessive and a dog needs to be homozygous little e to produce it. A dog that is recessive red will be completely red. Its nose will remain black or liver blue or Isabella, but the rest of its coat will be solid red. However, white markings and ticking can still show through. This is due to recessive red giving the skin cells a safe disability. It stops the skin from producing eumelanin. It is impossible for a recessive red dog to have any eumelanin hairs on its body. If you have a yellow Labrador or a golden retriever, find out for yourself. They will have no trace of black on their body. Although recessive red is recessive in its locus, it dominates over all the other loci, except for white and tiki. Dominant black, sable, wolf gray, tan points, recessive black, merle, and grain will all be turned red. It's impossible to know just by looking at a recessive red dog whether it carries sable, tan points, brindle, or any of the A or K loci, making it hard to know what it will pass down to its puppies. A recessive red could even be merle while appearing solid red. Two ways to tell if your recessive red dog has merle is to see if the dog has blue or partially blue eyes, or it has a pink or partially pink nose, or with spots on it. Recessive red only appears in particular breeds, but many of these breeds can also carry sable, which can look red. A clear, unmasked sable can look identical to a recessive red. Golden Retrievers and Labradors are two breeds that can only carry recessive red, and there are a number of breeds that carry and express both sable and recessive red, such as the Pomeranian and the Dachshund. Other breeds that do have the little e, little e genotype are the Beagle, the Brittany Spaniel, the Cardigan Welsh Corgi, the Chinese Sharpei, the Cocker Spaniel, the English Setter, the English Pointer, 
the flat-coated retriever, the French bulldog, the Irish setter, the Japanese chin, the poodle, the Portuguese water dog, and the vizsla. Lastly, we'll cover Grizzle and Domino together. The reason why I didn't put these two above Recessive Red is because these two alleles are only found in specific breeds, such as the Saluki, the Afghan Hound, and the Borzoi. This gene is known as Grizzle. Grizzle looks very much like a shaded sable or creeping tan and follows the widow's peak on the forehead. Grizzle is dominant over the other E. loci alleles, except for the mask. Grizzles can only occur in dogs that are homozygous tan points. Grizzle has been thought to be a, a modifier of tan point. Big E.H. is a recently discovered allele only found in English Cocker Spaniels. These Spaniels with this allele are known as Sables despite not actually being Sable. All Grizzles have been homozygous non-black in the K-Locus, but all Cocker Spaniels have been both homozygous and heterozygous black, and any Cocker Sable that is homozygous non-black is called Dirty Red. It seems that Big E.H. can override Dominant Black. Next, we'll look into the sea locus, also known as albino. Albino is a rare condition and makes pigment cells produce restricted or no pigment at all. As of now, there are no known sea locus mutations in dogs, as no pure white dogs have tested positive for albino. But there is one gene that has been proven to be caused by albinism, and it creates white Dobermans. A white Doberman isn't entirely white, and it keeps some very faint pigment. The white Doberman gene is recessive. There isn't much research on this locus, and it is rare and hard to study. Lastly, we'll look at the I locus. Until recently, geneticists thought that the C locus was responsible for the intensity of femelin and pigment in dogs. But now it's been discovered that ivory and white dogs do not have any mutations in the C locus. This new locus has been hypothesized as a femelin in dilution. It isn't known how this locus works or which alleles are present. The idea is that it causes the female in, in the coat to lighten or darken, affecting recessive red and sable dogs especially. The eye locus does not affect eumelanin in any way, which is why many white dogs still have black noses. In studies on the Samoids, geneticists have found that they were homozygous for both recessive red and recessive black. This discovery has made some geneticists think that this combination of genes causes them to be white. The thought is that recessive red stops a dog from producing eumelanin in the coat, and the recessive black stops it from producing femelanin, resulting in a coat that couldn't produce any pigment. This is all a theory though, and it has not been proven. The hypothesized eye locus can lighten tan points, but not affecting the eumelanin, which can cause the tan points to look white. Huskies may have this, as their white marks seem to match a typical black tan marking, but instead with white. The eye locus can also affect sables and brindles, and there are many dogs that are almost completely white but have a creamy or ivory sheen to them. Breeds that commonly have this appearance are the Bichon Frise, the Samoyed, the American Eskimo, the German Spitz, the Maltese, the Bolognese, the Akita, the Shiba Inu, the Saluki, the Anatolian Shepherd, the Labrador, the Commodore, the Pulley, and the Pekingese. Some breeds of dog, especially the Japanese Akita Inu and the Shiba Inu, display a pattern known as Yurajiro. Yurajiro appears as white points on a red dog. The points are located in about the same places as a tan point. It is unknown which gene causes Yurajiro, but it's possible that it is connected to the C or I locus. There is a theory that Yurajiro is actually tan points that are diluted to white. However, for that to be possible, there must be a dilution gene that only affects the red found in tan points and not normal recessive red. A typical red Shiba Inu with Urajiro would then be recessive red with diluted tan points, but red Urajiro Shiba Inus often show sabling, which isn't possible on a recessive red dog. But a more possible theory is that the genes causing Urajiro completely restricts pigment to the warmest parts of the dog, leaving the limbs, underparts, and other extremities white. Once red areas are affected, which can be seen on black and tan Shiba Inus, the Urajiro does not go further than the edges of the tan markings. And Urajiro also doesn't seem to affect masks. Dogs can also show Urajiro-like patterns, but instead this would be due to white spotting. 
Two breeds that are unique and put under the eye locust category are Huskies and Alaskan Malamutes. They have interesting coats which usually consists of gray and black hairs on the back and head and white on the underside. There isn't any official explanation of how this is formed. The writer on this website that I used helped me understand genetics wrote this theory of how the eye locust fits in with the husky fur. Quote, it appears that huskies are dogs with the wolf gray and a goody pattern, which is little w little w on the a locust and little k little k on the k locust to allow the a locust to be expressed. Usually this appears as a dark sable type pattern, but with banded hairs. The dark hairs are generally confined to the top of the dog, with the paws and muzzle a definite red. When this pattern is combined with the intensity gene, the red paws and muzzle become cream and the undercoat lightens to produce a grayish look. This is the typical wolf gray pattern and is seen on breeds such as the Kishon. Notice how there are scattered white hairs and white banded hairs in the gray areas. These would be red in normal agouti, but have been turned to white by the blanket dilution of femelinin caused by the intensity locus. Black banded hairs have also been left dark because chinchilla does not affect eumelanin. End quote. The writer of this website thinks that the husky pattern is a result of the interaction of four alleles, wolf gray, eye locus dilution, white spotting, and some form of erogero. Their reasoning? Firstly, most huskies are agouti. Secondly, considering the effect of Yurijiro on Agouti, as the Shiba Inu is either a sable or Agouti. Thirdly, the red on the husky's coat would be diluted to an off-white cream by the eye locust. Fourthly, white spotting is added, resulting in blazes and chest patches. Well, this was a fun lesson to end on. Shout out to Jenko, Jinja Ninja O3O Shiba Inu. Haha! <laughs> I'll see you next time when we learn about the M locus and the H locus.